What do you mean you can have a bank without bankers? What do you mean you can have, <laughs> you know, you can have an exchange without people? What, you know, ha, ha, you know, to them, this is alien concept because it is really the antithesis of the existing system. So they've never been comfortable. And then they use the ridiculous KYC AML thing, which really all KYC AML is to increase tax takes. So everyone has to declare everything. That's really what that's about. It wasn't really about terrorism financing and stuff like that. It's really about they need to know where your money is at all times so you can't leave the system. Okay, fine. We live in their countries. They want those rules. It is what it is. But they they just don't like this whole system yet. In the latest escalation of regulatory scrutiny within the United States, the cryptocurrency sector faces significant challenges as agencies intensify their oversight. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission has notably hardened its stance recently issuing a Wells notice to Uniswap Labs, signaling potential enforcement action for operating as an unregistered exchange and broker-dealer. This move echoes similar nemesis sent to major players like Coinbase and Kraken, highlighting a pattern of aggressive regulatory actions aimed at reigning in the rapidly evolving crypto industry. Uniswap Labs, creator of Ethereum's largest decentralized trading platform, is at the forefront of this confrontation. The firm's response to the Wells notice was pointed and clear, underscoring a broader sentiment within the crypto community about the SEC's approach. There is a perceived lack of regulatory clarity and an unwillingness on the part of the SEC to provide a pathway to compliance for entities operating within the legal boundaries of U.S. law. The response from Hayden Adams, founder of Uniswap Labs, was both defiant and dismayed, indicating readiness for a protracted legal battle that could potentially reach the Supreme Court. This incident is part of a broader narrative where numerous crypto firms are finding themselves in the crosshairs of the SEC. For instance, Ethereum developer Consensys has also received a Wells notice concerning its MetaMask wallet, with the SEC indicating intentions to classify Ethereum's native token, Ether, as a security. Consensys has vocally denied any wrongdoing and expressed its determination to contest the SEC's claims, marking another significant chapter in the ongoing legal disputes between regulatory bodies and crypto entities. The ripple effects of these regulatory actions are profound. They not only challenge the operational framework of the implicated companies, but also stir significant uncertainty and concern among investors and developers about the future of crypto innovations in the US. The industry's response has been a mixture of resilience and strategic shifts, with some contemplating relocation to more crypto-friendly jurisdictions like the UAE, as highlighted by Raul Powell of Real Vision. Powell articulates a common suspicion among industry insiders that the stringent U.S. regulatory measures might be a strategic attempt to keep capital within traditional financial systems at the risk of alienating a thriving technological frontier. These developments come at a time when the global cryptocurrency market continues to evolve rapidly, with new technologies and financial products that challenge traditional regulatory frameworks. The SEC's current trajectory could potentially stifle innovation and lead to a brain drain of talent and capital to regions offering more supportive regulatory environments. This tension underscores a crucial debate about the balance between regulation and innovation, a debate that is not just about compliance, but about the future of financial technology itself. As this regulatory drama unfolds, the stakes are incredibly high for both the crypto industry and regulatory bodies. The outcome of these legal battles will likely set important precedents for how decentralized technologies are treated globally, with industry leaders ready to defend their ground and the SEC equally determined, the path ahead is fraught with legal complexities and potential shifts in how cryptocurrencies are perceived and regulated on a global scale. As we continue to monitor these developments, the broader implications for the U.S. as a hub of technological innovation remain a critical point of discussion. Almost every other central bank in the world of, of certain size is working on CBDCs. The U.S. won't because it's terrified of making the move. And the U.S. has a history of this, and I wrote some threads about this in the past. So after the U.S. left the gold standard, right, everybody now needed to exchange currencies with each other. And the U.S. was like, well, we don't really want to be involved in this because they were worried about what was going to happen to the dollar. So mm. the U.K. started the foreign exchange markets, and it became the biggest market the world has ever seen. And the UK dominated that market ever since. Second was the second one was the offshore lending in dollars. So the US was really worried about dollar circulation outside of the US. Didn't know what how to deal with it. Same thing with a reserve currency, we're on to fuck this up. So they just basically restricted um, US bank lending to various entities. So the UK started the Eurodollar market, 
which is the offshore dollar market, and it siphoned through other global banks. In a pivotal move against regulatory overreach, Consensus has taken a firm stand by filing a lawsuit in a Texas court challenging the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission's authority over Ethereum. The complaint boldly states that despite previous acknowledgments by the SEC that Ethereum does not qualify as a security, the agency is now seeking to regulate it as such. This legal challenge underscores a critical battle for the future of cryptocurrency and could set a precedent for how digital assets are regulated in the United States. The lawsuit has garnered substantial backing from the crypto community, which views the SEC's recent actions as an aggressive power grab that threatens to stifle innovation. Lex Sulin, a former employee of Consensus, echoed the sentiment that the responsibility to push back against this regulatory encroachment falls on all stakeholders in the Web3 space. The collective response highlights a significant moment of unity and defiance within the industry aiming to preserve the decentralized ethos that cryptocurrencies were built upon. This legal confrontation aligns with broader concerns articulated by Raul Powell, who believes the SEC's stringent policies are more about maintaining control over the financial system than about protecting investors. According to Powell, U.S. position as the global financial hegemon is threatened by the disruptive potential of decentralized technologies, which is why the regulatory body appears to be selectively enforcing rules to support domestic enterprises like Coinbase, while sidelining foreign competitors like Binance. Powell's critique extends to the overall strategy of U.S. regulatory bodies, suggesting that while they may perceive the approval of cryptocurrency-based ETFs as a victory, it might actually serve as a Trojan horse that accelerates adoption of cryptocurrencies. He argues that these regulatory handbrakes won't significantly slow down the momentum of the global crypto market, which continues to attract capital inflows and drive innovation, regardless of U.S. domestic policies. The ongoing saga has not only legal but also geopolitical implications as countries around the world are increasingly interested in integrating cryptocurrencies into their economies. Nations like Dubai, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom are actively attracting crypto talent, creating hubs of innovation that stand in stark contrast to the U.S. restrictive stance. This divergence highlights a global race not just for technological supremacy but also for the economic benefits associated with being a leader in the emerging digital economy. The U.S. approach to regulation is further complicated by political dynamics, with figures like Senator Elizabeth Warren expressing skepticism towards cryptocurrencies. These political narratives around the risks and regulation of digital assets contrast sharply with the proactive strategies employed by other regions, which view cryptocurrency as a means to secure a foothold in the future digital landscape. As Raul Powell insightfully points out, despite regulatory hurdles, the integration of traditional finance and cryptocurrency is inevitable. This transition represents not just a technological shift, but a fundamental realignment of economic power structures. The evolving landscape suggests that while U.S. regulators may attempt to impose boundaries on crypto transactions and innovations, the global nature of the industry and its inherent resistance to centralized control will continue to drive its expansion. The clash between consensus and the SEC is emblematic of a larger struggle within the United States to balance innovation with regulation. As the legal and political battles unfold, the outcomes will not only affect the future of Ethereum and other digital assets, but also determine the role of the U.S. in the next generation of the global financial system. The industry's unified stand against what it perceives as regulatory overreach is a testament to the growing maturity and resilience of the crypto sector, poised to redefine the boundaries of technology and finance.